Hello and welcome. My name is James Connell. I'm a Senior Solutions Architect here at Pulumi. Today I'd like to demonstrate capabilities of Pulumi for authoring components to abstract infrastructure definitions for consumption by end users, which I will show using Simple YAML specification. Specifically, I'd like to highlight a separation of concerns between end users who consume component abstractions to provision infrastructure and platform teams who own and create the infrastructure abstractions for those users. Using modern infrastructure as code techniques, platform teams can produce component libraries in any of our supported languages, using standard software development best practices, and realize benefits of using general purpose languages, such as strong typing, unit testing, package management, and semantic versioning. And users can consume these abstractions from any language the Pulumi supports including a basic YAML specification that I will show today. I'm going to use the Java language as an example for component authoring and would like to highlight a few aspects of Pulumi Java components. First, uh, Java components are simple classes. They can be consumed in any Pulumi supported language such as TypeScript, Python, Go, or via our YAML declarative spec, which I'll talk about briefly. Components are distributed via Git and semantically versioned. And the Plumi runtime is responsible to download and execute the component as part of the Plumi lifecycle in a seamless manner. The idea being that component authors working in Java can take advantage of their existing tools and SDLC and easily distribute components to their end users. Plumi YAML is our simple declarative IAC specification it's meant to be approachable to users who are comfortable working with YAML, perhaps coming from CloudFormation or Kubernetes. In our demo today, I'll show how Java components are seamlessly composed using the YAML specification. So Plumi YAML works really well in a number of different deployment scenarios. Today, I'll show how we can use these templates in our new project wizard um, which allows users to do a basic click to deploy workflow. However, there are many other ways we could deploy YAML programs. For example, they could be submitted to Kubernetes and deployed via our Kubernetes operator. Or in a more advanced scenario, we can programmatically compose and execute YAML programs using our Plumi Automation API. Let's do a deeper dive on each of these scenarios. Let's talk about Java components in Pulumi. So Pulumi components in general are abstractions that aggregate over sets of related resources. Um, in this case, we're looking at an auto-scaling group with its load balancer, DNS, security groups, etc. And the purpose is to, of course, abstract and encapsulate functionality so that end users only worry about the inputs and outputs of the component. Some characteristics of a Pulumi component in Java. They're just simple classes that extend component resource. We can use class attributes to expose Pulumi outputs to the end user. There is always a class constructor. It takes a specific pattern, so we will give a name for the component. This is the runtime name. We can add any optional parameters. For instance, I have a class here called web environment args, which looks like this. I'm using Lombok to set up the kind of standard builder pattern in Java. However, we can have any sorts of arguments we want here. Um, it could be string inputs, etc. And last, we have component resource options. Uh, this is a bag of settings that just controls the behavior of the resource. In general, component resource options can do things like parent relationships, dependencies, deletion protection, and that sort of thing. We always call the superclass constructor and pass it a custom type name. So in this case, we're calling it web index web environment, uh, and it's always in this pattern.
resource declarations. So we build all of our resources typically within the constructor. They're primarily declarative in nature. So we instantiate a resource by calling its constructor and passing in a name and any relevant arguments. In Java, we extensively use the builder pattern to create the argument classes for each of the resources. And for each resource, we can explicitly define its own component resource options. For instance, in this case, I am parenting the security group resource to the web environment. I can also do things like set protection bits here, which would prevent deletion of the resource. As you can see in this example, I have a number of resources. And one thing to highlight here would be that resources can reference each other. So for instance, I'm referencing the key name of the SSH key that I declared above here. Additionally, I'm referencing the input arguments uh, in order to configure this launch template. Java being an imperative language, we can do things like string manipulation within the execution, which is pretty useful. Additionally, we can perform imperative actions during execution, such as fetching information from APIs, databases, file IO, etc. In this case, we are fetching the zone ID from the AWS API given the hosted zone name so that we can use it to create a DNS record. At the end of the constructor, we register our outputs. So here I'm registering uh, both of those class attributes. Now that we've talked about how to create components in Pulumi using Java language, Let's talk about how we can compose those components to create a Plumi program. This is an example of a Plumi YAML program. Plumi YAML is our declarative specification. It's great for teams who aren't comfortable with working in general purpose programming languages and are more comfortable using a declarative specification. For example, teams familiar with CloudFormation can easily create programs in Plumi YAML and feel right at home. Additionally, it can be used in in automation, where we want to programmatically compose programs, YAML is a great way to do that. In this case, we have two components, uh, a DNS validated certificate and the web environment, which we looked at previously. Within the SDK folder, we have some configuration files that tell Pulumi where to find the component in Git, as well as a version, which maps to a Git tag. So we have one for each. The Plumi engine is responsible then for fetching the component and executing the Java as part of the uh, Plumi update operation. So let's go ahead and run Plumi up and see what happens. So our Plumi program wants to create the stack. So here we see our DNS validated certificate and our web environment and all of the child resources under each of those components. So now Plumi will be creating those resources and this is going to take some time so we'll come right back. Okay, so we see we've completed our Plumi update, the stack's been created, and our front end URL for our website has been output. It's easy to create a template from our YAML program. Here I've got a template repo in GitHub, and I'm putting my template in this folder. I've copied my project into this folder you can see I have my SDKs folder and my polymi.yaml file. And I made some changes to the template. 
first, I've replaced the name and description with placeholders for the template. And I've added a template section to the YAML. Description is going to be the default description for the new project. And config contains the inputs that are required to create a project from the template. These will be copied into a stack YAML. Each of the config values has a name, description, the type of the input, and optionally a default value. And that's it. The rest of the project remains the same. And we can use this from the new project wizard, which I will show next. Here's an example of creating a new project from a templated version of our YAML program. We choose our project, which is stored in a Git repository. Fill out some project details, like a project name. Initial stack name, which I'll leave alone. Configuration values, which come from our template. You can see the defaults are here. Next, we will choose an ESC environment. We just have some base VPC configuration for the template. And finally, we need to put this in a repository. We have the option of choosing a new repository. I'll go ahead and name it RPS Web Demo. And I'll put a subdirectory for my stack. When we click Create Project, Plumi will copy our code into the new repo, set up the deployments agent, and kick off a new deployment. Now that the update is going, we'll skip ahead. And we see that we're just finishing up deploying our resources. And we're done. Here we can see our output value. We'll paste that into our browser. And we can see that our website is up. In summary, we've shown that we can use Plumi components in any language, in this case Java, to abstract infrastructure, separate concerns, and encapsulate complexity. We also learned that Plumi YAML is a great tool for composing components in a simple fashion. It's very accessible to non-programmers and great for automation use cases. Finally, we took a look at the new project wizard and Plumi deployments, which can help enable no-code workflows for getting infrastructure up fast. Thank you very much.